Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to, to be part of this auspicious event. My presentation will be uh, about my experiences and I have titled my, my topic, uh, When Compassion Heads and Autoethnographic uh, auto Experience of Vicarious Trauma by a Forensic Nurse. So that will be the presentation outline. And um, we, we all know, and we even heard yesterday that uh, compassion is required when caring for victims of violence. And during this process, the forensic nurse gather evidence of sexual abuse, as we have heard from previous speakers, you gather evidence and treat any injury sustained during the assault. So this process always subject the forensic nurse to most horrific things done by human beings on the other. And then as a result, forensic nurses may be subjected to compassion fatigue that may include vicarious traumatization. So vicarious trauma is a transfer process that occurs between therapists as a result of empathic relationship with the patient, traumatic experience. That includes alteration of the belief system and subsequent way of seeing the world. So this may lead to chronic changes in the person's perception of the world around them and professional degradation. The challenge is that there are several studies existing that have been conducted on vicarious trauma experience by forensic nurses. We, will, we can all acknowledge and attest that there is existence of violence crimes globally, and there is a need for continued professional duty to provide compassionate care to victims of violence. And we are also aware that as a result of providing that care, such type of care can have effects that can change the schema of forensic nurses that may be pervasive, cumulative, and even permanent. But the challenge is there is death of literature regarding available interventions for forensic nurses who may experience this vicarious trauma. Now, I'm sharing my experiences of vicarious trauma for the countries who are in the process of developing forensic nursing curriculum or those advancing forensic nursing science in their respective countries to consider coming up with measures possible to support practicing nurses. Because if nurses have to empower victims, they also need to be empowered more so that they, this, the, the, the tragedies, the ordeal that uh, participants, are, I mean, clients are experienced can be transferred to them. So I have used the qualitative single author autoethnographic approach that enabled me to talk about the self in a social uh, cult cultural context and explain. Uh, there was no consent, but I am also a con con cognizant of the fact the issue of relational ethics, which Lap had referred to as not being an island and that I might somehow integrate the people whom I, I had interacted with. So the data collection here was through personal narratives and self-reflection reflections. And then I used a, a, a thematic data analysis. Now, how did this whole thing start? Uh, it started when I joined one of the hospitals that I indicated that I worked in three hospitals. And then when I joined this particular hospital, I was co-opted to be part of the past team, whereby one uh, um, center, a dis designated center, that was part of the presentation done by Dr. Naidu, the Tutuzala Care Centers, was about to be established. I was just asking myself, well, what contribution, because I'm from general medical wards, pediatric wards, and all those things, what contribution am I going to make in this particular team? So I decided to enroll with the University of Free State to begin my training. During the training, uh, we were requested to come up with a case study, which is part of grading up to, towards our module mark. And then I came across a very, very, the very first uh, trimester, shocking um, case, the first time of my life, whereby a lady was just, just raped, gang raped by three, gentlemen, one sexually, one vaginally, and one orally. 
And as it is, as, it is, as if it is not enough, they also stabbed him on the chest. And then they took his, her 800 rand that she was having and then her mobile phone. So as I was presenting to my lecture, this case, I was crying throughout. We, we had to stop several times and she, she asked me, do you really wanna continue with this training? Because I was already there, I did not know what forensic mercy entailed. I said, I just know that while crying and we continued. So I managed to finish the training. That was in 2006. I managed to finish the training. And then I had to go so long, get back home to practice as an individual practitioner. Now, when I get home, in the area where I was practicing, I was the first forensic nurse who was trained. So many clinics and surrounding small hospital were referring all patients or clients who are, are, are victims of violence, who I have to see alone. So I was working Monday to Friday, and I was seeing clients of all ages. And the, the, the ages that I, I managed to see at the time was one, one year, two months, to 94 years. So six months after working in the center, I started experiencing this left-sided ch chest pain. I, every time when I, I'm, I'm asleep, I'll always think of the stories that I heard from the, 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 the clients, the survivors. I kept going for assistance to the emergency medical department for, for assessment. I remember all the doctors who saw me, I was seen by three doctors at different intervals and all the doctors who saw me kept asking me if I'm smoking and all those things because of this uh, persistent pain on the left side. And they did performed ECG and nothing came out as, as anything deviating from the normal. So eventually one doctor uh, diagnosed me with related stress and I was referred for employee assistant program. But still, because I'm continuing with provision of care, I, I continue uh, uh, experiencing these challenges. And then was, I started becoming obsessed with my personal safety and security, as well as that of my children and my significant others, as well as that of the children in the, in the whole area where I, I, I was staying. I, I started putting all measures of safety within my means. I put the butlers, I put the, the alarm system, and I would become an uneasy when it is cool out and my, my children are not yet home. I will drive madly around the township looking for them. And I remember the other time I just get into the school ground, I, I was just driving like a mad person. And then when I stopped the car, there was a cloud of, of dust in the air. And then the principal was just asking, what, what is wrong? What is happening? And then I was just like, where are the kids? So I, I felt like this, this, I started even changing when, when I travel alone. I, I will have, I will disguise, I will wear like a man, a cap, so that anyone who sees me in the car will think that I am a man. And uh, in social gatherings, I will uh, just be wary of my glass. If there's, there's any beverages that are, is being taken there, I'll just hold my glass to myself because I know my, some of my patients got raped after having doped with the drugs in their, their, their drinks. So um, eventually I felt like uh, really I'm not being productive in here. And I left the, 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 the hospital for the nursing college. But when I was at the nursing college, I could not stop thinking about the care the victims were receiving. And I also believed that there are still victims who need a forensic nursing care. And at the time, because now the, the, the air, my area now knew about forensic nursing, there were four of my colleagues who went for training at the very institution where I trained. So I vowed that I am going to be part of these people. I am going to support them. I am going to, to enable them a platform maybe to communicate because we cannot all communicate about these issues. So as I, um, I joined, um, as part of the help that I wanted to give to these colleagues of mine, we started being um, 
looking for one association that Professor Sinegubu was presenting yesterday, I, which is I am a founder member and executive member thereof, South African Forensic Missing Association. So I am still part of them. Uh, we do communicate, we interact because I know what it, it is like to be a forensic nurse dealing with the, the patients in there. And I'm very glad that most of the countries in this uh, uh, conference who presented, they were talking about the development of curriculum, they were talking about the duties that the missing forensic nurses are supposed to be doing, but there was no this issue of um, uh, uh, vicarious trauma. Now from that, I have realized that the, this trauma that a forensic nurse can ex uh, experience can result in one having physical symptoms, someone having psychological symptoms, and one can be socially irrational. You, you, you go to an extent of stopping in the street when you see people fighting and you want to just intervene. And really that was irrational. So in, uh, towards the conclusion, I would say, constant exposure to trauma narratives and injuries have the potential of change changing the perception of individual about self, others and the environment. And in other instances, the person may suffer from both physiological and psychological symptoms. And it is therefore necessary for forensic nurses to learn to develop coping strategies, to be able to provide the much needed care to victims of, of violence. And also the employer can come up with strategies that can assist them, just an environment to debrief about these whole things, because it can really make you very dysfunctional. I'm aware that individuals react differently to similar situations. I might have experienced vicarious trauma, but colleagues may not. And that is why I'm so happy and being part of them because I can see that they are coping. So not anyone can react to that. But I, however, strongly believe that it is necessary for forensic nurses to be conversant with the concept of vicarious trauma because I never had that idea as a forensic nurse. I joined the team because I was just co-opted and I was to serve in the, the, the task team that was uh, developed in, the, hosp in, the, in the, the hospital. So it only came to me now when I have left the practice, I am now in the university, now I'm leaning off the cardiac trauma. But if I could have known about it before, I believe I, I was going to seek for medical assistance earlier than waiting six months and more. And then as you are, we are developing uh, the curriculum and all those things, inclusion of the current trauma topics in the forensic nursing curriculum will enable nurses to identify these symptoms early and seek assistance on time. Practicing nurses may also create platforms such as uh, communities of practice of forensic nurses to be able to debrief and support each other. Just talk about it. That will be helpful for them. And then I believe this presentation will not end well if I don't mention uh, uh, and, and appreciate uh, Virginia Lynch. Uh, I, I have heard in all the presentations that she had an, an input in uh, developing of forensic nursing in different countries. So we are children of one mother that makes us a family. So um, thank you very much. <laughs>